Well, you've got a heat pump and you've got a holiday booked and you might be asking yourself the question, what should you do with your heat pump whilst you're on holiday? You might have had a routine with your old gas boiler and you want to know whether you should do the same thing. So there's a few schools of thought about this, but recently I've been on holiday and I want to show you what I've done. So the first school of thought is just turn it off. It doesn't matter. Deal with it when you come back. The second school of thought is put it on a setback, so kind of decrease the temperature that you're asking it to heat the house to. So it's still running low and slow, but even lower than normal. And then the third school of thought is just leave it as it normally is. Leave it at 21 degrees and just let it crack on with it. Don't touch it. So you might be confused. You might not be sure what to do. And I want to show you what I've done and why I've decided that anyway, and whether I was right after actually testing my theory. So um, let's uh, jump straight into it. Oh, before we get there, a reminder that 99% of you won't like the video, won't leave a comment, and 96% of you are still not subscribed to the channel. What am I doing wrong? Um, so this is day number nine of my holiday. I decided I was going to test out the theory of just turning the heat pump off. Uh, well, not actually physically isolating it electric from the electronics or anything, so it still had you know safety systems in place, and it was still doing the domestic hot water cycle annoyingly. Um, but I turned it so that the the central heating was off. After nine days, day nine of holiday, you can see that the the air temperature in my living room had got to fourteen point eight degrees, so a bit cooler than would normally be comfortable. And this in UK time was 342 a.m. UK time. So at this point, preparing to return home, I decided to turn the heating back on and just see what would happen. Okay. So if I was away for a shorter time, I probably would have just left the heating on or maybe put it on setback. But I thought because we're going to be away for 10 days, I thought, let's turn it off. Let's see what happens. And let's see how much thermal mass we've built up into the home and how long it takes to cool down. And actually, it was quite impressive that after nine days, it was 14.8 degrees inside admittedly outside uh, during that time didn't seem to be super cold but anyway um, so this is the same day but now it's 10 23 UK time so I turn the heating on at 3 42 a.m and then at 10 23 in the evening it has increased the internal temperature by 2.5 degrees and I just turned it on my normal schedule as you can see at the moment it's in a setback period and I have my setback at 15 degrees to make it comfortable to sleep. So normal schedule, nothing adjusted. At this point, I thought about it a bit more and I thought by the time we get home, I don't think it's going to be fully up to comfortable temperature. 17 degrees, that's OK. That's not too bad. It's livable. But we were in a warm place and we didn't want to come back to a cold home. So I decided to give it a little bit of a boost. So in the cheap hours of the morning, I'm on Octopus Agile Tariff, brilliant tariff if you like playing the games. Um, from midnight to 5.30 a.m., I adjusted the temperature to 23 degrees. Typically, I have this at 18, 19 degrees, something like that. But I decided to put that up to 23 degrees to give the house a little bit of a boost. Let's see what happened. Um, and I was a little bit concerned about air changes as well. I was thinking maybe if we're not in the property it's not being occupied there's not doors opening and closing letting in cold air we're not running the extractor fans extracting the warm air which would be drawing more cold air in. so I thought maybe the property has actually got a good chance of heating itself but then I also thought we're not cooking we're not running the heat pump tumble dryer we don't have our warm bodies adding to the heat so I was interested to see how these things all play together but anyway this is what we got to day 10 of our holiday as we're preparing to return home. Um, after the, the boost session in the morning of 23 degrees and then onto its normal schedule, you can see it's bumped up another 1.2 degrees. So, so far we've added 2.5 degrees, then we've added another 1.2 degrees there and this is 118 UK time. So, um, now I wanted to just show you that uh, after a small period, 
going from 118 up to 423, it added another 1.3 degrees just on the normal schedule. And you can see now my desired temperature is only 5 degrees. I do this between 4 to 7 p.m. because I'm playing the Octopus Agile game. And uh, there will be a link in the description if you're interested in joining, joining Octopus Energy. And they've saved me loads of money by um, running my heat pump and getting plenty of cheap electricity from their smart tariffs. But anyway... What would I do next time? Because ultimately, I did get there after, you know, just over a day and a half of turning the system on a boost and monitoring it. But next time, all I would do instead of messing around with changing my uh, target temperatures up and then having to revert to my normal settings... Next time, I would just change my weather compensation curve. I don't know why this didn't occur to me at the time. You can now do it in the app, so you can do it remotely. And I am on the on my valent uh, heat pump. I'm on a 0 0.6 weather compensation curve, and I would have bumped that up to 0 0.8. And because I am using full weather compensation with no room influence, so I am just using the outdoor weather temperature, the temperature sensor outside to control my internal flow temperature that would bring up my home interior temperature significantly by putting it on 0 0.8 and I would probably put it on 0 0.8 the day before I came home and then see how it goes and then revert to the normal uh, weather compensation curve that's what I would do next time um, I looked at how much uh, energy I theoretically saved myself and it's in the region of 20 kilowatt hours, um, maybe 30 kilowatt hours at a push. It's not a huge amount of energy that I've saved um, because the weather looked to be quite mild. So I'm guessing from historical use and outdoor temperatures. Um, in fact, it, it, it could have potentially been more. There were a few evenings and a few nights where the temperature dipped a lot lower. So maybe maybe I've saved 40 kilowatt hours by turning the heat pump off. But then because I had to overdrive the heat pump a little bit to gain it back up to temperature, I lost it a little bit. So I think overall, it, it's probably fair to say 30 kilowatt hours were saved in this little exercise. Um don't forget thermal mass. This is another thing that I haven't been able to quantify here and I haven't measured. But of course, all of these temperatures here, the current temperature show in and the, the target temperature, these are all air temperatures, which is fine. And if you maintain an air temperature for long enough, then all of the thermal mass, so my desk, my chair that I'm on, my sofa, my dining table, all of that will soak up a lot of this thermal energy and that will increase. But of course, when we first got home and it was around 20 degrees and I was like, oh, it feels a little bit chilly. Yeah, I've come from a much warmer place. But then I touched our leather sofa and I touched our dining table and my suspicions were confirmed. I'd lost a lot of the thermal mass and we're still building that up now as we return from holiday. So um, it's it's another important thing, uh, something for us heat pump owners to learn about and understand that uh, thermal mass actually contributes quite significantly to the comfortable feeling of a building that's heated by a heat pump through this low and slow uh, technique. Anyway, I've waffled on far too long. Once again, 99% of you won't like this video and won't leave a comment. Perhaps I'm not worthy of a like or a comment, but thank you to those of you who do. And 96% of you are not subscribed and I'm producing content like this all the time, typically two to three times a week. So please come and join us in the future for more of this kind of stuff. Goodbye for now.